Hello, and welcome to Tip of the Week. This is the third part in a series that we're doing on coordination between architecture, structure, and MEP. Uh, this is done by uh, cadtechseminars.com. Our website for ease is freerevittraining.com. So check us out if you have questions about our training, uh, consulting, or implementation. So here we go. Where we left off, we're talking about setting up monitoring, and this can be done in the MEP or the structure, to monitor part of the architectural model. Now we set up the structural monitoring. Now we'll do a little bit with MEP so we can see how they all work together. So I'm going to switch on over to Revit MEP and I'm going to start a new model again. So we come in here, uh, drop this down. I want to start a new. We're going to go to Project and we're going to fire this off and we're going to come up here and we'll do let's say uh, Mechanical Default. That's fine. We hit Open and Open and same scenario is going to pop up. We get a nice fresh one and we're going to link it in. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about something different now. In this linking, I'm going to place some toilets. Something very simple, so you can see how this works. Let's go in here, we're going to uh, now link something, so we're going to go to Insert, uh, Revit Link. And I'm not sure if we have that set up with the shortcut. Ah, okay. So we're just going to go looking, I have to get to that little shortcut there. And we have the architectural plan with work sets. There it is. And we're going to load it in. Again, we're going to load origin to origin. It keeps things clean. And if I want, I can come in here and specify on my first shot. And I'll hit open. Now, at this point, really the only thing I'm, I don't want is, uh, let's say, the landscaping. I'd like the exterior skin, the levels, and the work set so I can line everything up. Typically, what we'd do is go through the monitoring first. We'd set up the grids and the levels and monitor them. Once they're monitored, then we go in and actually make some adjustments. Um, you know, start putting in our equipment, etc. I'm going to skip over the monitoring. Um, assuming that's done, we're going to go and start placing some equipment. Now, if you'll notice that in the MEP, it looks different from the structure and it looks different from the architectural. In MEP, it takes all the architectural information, uh, takes all the tags out, and just brings in the model and grays it out, pretty much like you do with an XREF in AutoCAD if you're in the MEP field. So here we are. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and go home and I'm going to place in some components. Place a plumbing fixture. Now one of the things about Revit uh, this application is you'll see it says place on vertical plane, place on a work plane, place on a face. So if I pick one of these, let's say uh, toilets here, and I come in here and you'll see how it actually kind of sticks to that wall, right? So see where it says click on host face to place instance. Now the cool thing is I can place these toilets and as I place them, you'll see these little blue things called connectors. Uh, those connectors let the MEP people actually pull pipe and electrical and all that from that. But what you'll notice is I actually selected or rolled over that wall. Now MEP is going to remember that wall. Now it's very important with MEP and in uh, structure that the architect does not delete the wall and redraw the wall. These toilets are linked to that object. That object has about a 16-digit code that it knows what it is because it's all database-driven. So those toilets know they're associated with the face of this object. Now the problem that sometimes pops up is the architect deletes that wall and redraws it. The next time the mechanical guy opens up, these toilets are floating free or they're sitting on the floor or they're, they've, they don't, they've lost their attachment to the wall. So you need to be very careful with grids, walls, etc in the architectural model, uh, once an object's drawn and the mechanical and structural people start to utilize that model, try not to delete the objects. What you want to do is just manipulate the object, only delete it last case scenario because by deleting it you're actually causing problems on their side. So I've placed these in. Now I'm going to just come over here and I'm going to save this. And we're going to call it uh, MEP plan real simple here. And we hit save on that. Alright. So we're going to save it and then we're going to close out of this. Now we're going to go play architect again. Now we have uh, we have some things linked here because it's actually looking at that wall and we have some on the structural side. So we're going to just close this right now. Okay. And we'll drop that down. And we're going to go to the architecture and structure. Let's close out of that. Let's save it and we will close this one. Alright, and we're going to go back to architecture. Now, back in architecture, we'll open this one back up. Now, even the architect 
now that you have work sets this is where it gets nice come in on Monday morning Tuesday whenever it is and I need to open up a project so I'll come over here I hit open project and we go to the folder and I pick it now before I open it let's say again I don't need landscaping so I just go specify now when I get to specify it I hit open the nice thing is I get the ability and here to say no nope, don't need the landscaping and I hit open so it doesn't load it it's not taking up a lot of memory so depending on how you break your models up you could take a hundred meg model and break it into little 20 meg uh, chunks and then it's easy to uh, work with etc now here we are notice no landscaping it's all gone now here's where it starts to get fun um, if the architect comes in here and decides he's going to manipulate the building now you'll notice I've got one and two here I don't have any uh, annotation so let's just come in here and put, let's say, in a line dimension. We'll pick here and here, and we'll place it. Oh, try that again. Pick. Okay, and that might be turned off. So, okay, not visible in the view. So let's just go to the light bulb at the bottom. Uh, they're already got some on. So what we'll do is we'll pick the object and unhide in view category, so we can actually see what's going on here. All right, we'll get out of that. Uh, you'll notice that it's uh, 20 foot 9 inches from column to column and again not that important but what we're going to do is come over here and manipulate the building let's say I take this wall and I'm going to move it now, I'm just going to drag it on out some it's really not that critical about the distance okay so the building got larger and we'll also take this here and if I were to put a lock or some type of relationship um, that would have actually moved also so now since it's 28 feet and it got a lot bigger as you can see we may make it bigger so it, we, we can really see make it really fat so we drag it on out so now you can notice that the building is um, dramatically changed right uh, so we move this on over again and we're also going to take this wall I'm going to take that wall and I'm going to move it over to maybe over here all right so there we go now we made uh, adjustments to the building and now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to save it so we save it now we're going to close out of this. We'll just actually close out, come down here, hit the close, and now let's see. We'll hit synchronize with central, so it writes all the information back, and we hit OK on this. Well, again, we can get into all the aspects of that later, but as of right now, let's see how everybody works together. Now, drop that down. So here we are. Now we'll go play structure. So the structure guy comes in and says, OK, let me open this up on Monday morning. When he opens up, being that we are monitoring, I mean, probably should have changed some levels too but you'll get the gist of it when we crank this up it's loading in that link and again instance of link needs coordination review this is where that monitoring comes in which makes it nice so it opens up and uh, we could have went right into it then but notice how the model automatically shows the differences now I'm gonna go to level one because we can actually see the columns right go to level one here and we zoom in now uh, in this location we're good to go now we've got some column grids here now our column grid is here theirs is well maybe over here um, I'm not seeing it because maybe I have it turned off so we could go back and um, adjust the links and show what we need to see but being that it's not on it's actually kinda good because we'll see what happens once we fire a few things off here now uh, in this view we could go down here and type in let's say VP if we want to show more information we'll change this to let's say coordination and we'll hit OK okay so we have more information you can see it's showing up now oh and let's see look at level one here level one okay level two okay go back to level one okay so here we're on level one now at this point you'll notice how we have certain things uh, our grid lines and notice there's theirs and there's ours okay not exactly sure what I've done there might be run out of memory sometimes causes issues with the application but uh, let's see what happens to these grids I'm gonna go up top to collaborate now at this time I'm gonna hit coordination review now when I fire this off I'm gonna select the link and I select this and it comes up and says hey I've got some problems here you'll notice that it says uh, we told it to kind of maintain the two relation to positioning by monitoring it and it said hey the grid moved now we're not maybe not exactly sure maybe we got a hundred different grid lines all over the place so what we can do is I'm gonna move it off to the side I'm gonna select this okay and we have the ability to hit show now 
depending on which one you grab, which show, see what actually highlights that. Says this one actually changed. Well, here's where it starts to get nice. I'm gonna come over here and say, you know what? Modify the grid, my grid, to match the architect's grid. So when I hit this and I hit OK, you'll notice how my grid jumped over. Let's look at one of the elevations. Okay, let's jump in here. Different one. It's front, south. Let's go to. Uh, I think it was east. Not exactly sure. Okay, north and south. Wait a second here. Okay. Notice what's happened. Notice we have one and two. Notice that our columns also moved also. So um, you can see how east, you'll see the spacing, and all of our columns moved over. So the trick with uh, coordination and also working with the different applications is you want to make sure that uh, we're all playing uh, the same game here. If you understand that the structural guy is using the grids that you're creating and you understand that his information is updating depending on your changes, then uh, you understand the kind of the big picture. So notice how uh, the structural guy could actually, again, verify that his information is uh, is there. Now what I would like to do if I was the structured guy, I would turn on your grid at this point if you were the architect and verify that everything's all aligned. But you can see how that stuff jumps around. But let's take a look at the mechanical side. Okay, We'll close that. Um, we'll hit yes. And these links work both ways which make it nice. So here we're back at this little splash screen of ours. We'll go back to MEP now. Now in MEP we're going to do the same thing. We open up. Now, MEP is going to tell us the same. Well, it's not going to tell us anything because we didn't monitor anything. Now, if I have critical walls, like that wall that had the toilets on it, I might monitor it. I might monitor any walls that are important to me, let's say mechanical rooms, toilets, etc., because the changes that may occur. So it would come up and tell me that this wall has actually changed. So you'll notice how the mechanical has actually moved with the wall. This also works with lighting. If you have a ceiling grid, now, mechanical, what it does is it actually ties to faces of objects. Doesn't matter if it's jip, doesn't matter if it's drop in, doesn't matter if, if it's you know glass. If you tell it to an object, and I'll go up top again, or we'll hit, let's say, plumbing fixture. If it is placed on an object, if it is uh, face based, okay, face based objects in the mechanical, as in the mechanical world, MEP, will move with the objects that they're based, that they're uh, snapped to. So it's important to understand that. So as the architectural components move, so does the, does the mechanical. Okay, so hopefully in these three videos you saw how the monitoring works, how the linking works, and how we can turn things on and off depending on our needs by using uh, that last tool which is work sets by using those all together. So hopefully this clears up a lot of how the coordination works between the different applications. So if you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to uh, call, email, or contact us at uh, cadtechseminars.com or, easier to remember, freerevittraining.com. Thank you.